it's Nancy again with Design Inventions and I wanted to work on another video today and I figured I'd kind of get out of the holiday or at least the fall theme and do this fun mermaid. This mermaid is a Mo Manning digital image and I love Mo Manning images and I try to get as many of them as I can digitally because then I can just kind of play with them. So we're going to work on her a little bit today. She's a cute little mermaid. Here are the colors that I'm going to use um, on the mermaid. I'm going to do her face and skin with E000, E00, E11, and a little bit of RO2. And then on her hair, we're going to use YR31, YR21, we're going to use FY1 and Y23. Yeah, that FY1 may stump a few people if you haven't used the fluorescence before, but when you see it, um, it's really a nice true yellow, and I like using some of those fluorescents once in a while. Add some brightness and fun to her hair. Then when we get into the body of the mermaid, we're going to go to, to the YG01, YG03, YG07, BG000, BG02, BG05, BG09. Uh, some of her tail and accents will be V01, V12, V15, V17, and then she has her little shell phone, as they call this, up on her face, and we're going to add just a little E50 to change up the, the neutral there, and again, go in with some accents of the E11, and maybe use the RO2 just to add a little bit of color. I'll add a little bit of a shimmer. You could use um, the Speak a Clear pen. You could use stickles if you wanted to, any of those types of things, so um, that's what we're uh, going to do. Okay, so let's get started. I always start, um, when I have an image like this, I do the skin first. I think that that's the one thing I like to get done and out of the way. It's one of the lightest things that we're going to do. So we're going to start with the, the skin first. And I do the skin with um, my, again, my triple zero, double zero, and E11. So I'm going to do her face first. I'll probably just turn my image a little bit. If you've seen anything, I'm a, I kind of turn my images. Now I'm going up a little bit into her hair because her hair is a little whimsical there. So we're going up into her hair and we'll bring the hair back down. So I, I tend to kind of draw a little bit, I guess, I don't know, a circle around her face like that. Don't want to ever forget their ears, too. A lot of times when you're doing images like this, you get their ears. She doesn't have an ear on this side because her shell phone is up against that. So we've put that first color in just a little bit. Now I'm going to go in with my E00, and I'm going to add a little bit. And again, I'm not coming out as far, but I'm just adding a little bit up into her hairline here. Okay, I think... You know, that side of her face and this ear is going to be a little darker. Okay, and in around the phone there. Okay, then I'm going to add the E11. The E11 may be a little dark for some people, um, but I like to add it as a little bit of accent. And just, I'm not adding much. I'm getting into the, at the corner of your ears and back down in here. A little bit, just a tiny line where it's going to be around... Her, um, the shell is a, is a little bit of a shadow. Okay, I also come in here and do like her little eyebrows and, and down in here around her nose. Now I'm coming back in here with the double zero and I'm going to pull a little bit more of this down. And again, she's not going to have a lot of color. There's so many, you know, options. You could use your E50 series if you wanted to on her because of um, if she's a true mermaid, she's down under the water and she's not getting any sun. So now I'm going back with my triple zero and just kind of blending up into that, coming out into here a little bit. Okay. 
Going back with my E11 again, just kind of coming back in here with her little nostrils. Putting some definition in there with her little nose. Again, kind of popping some of those areas. We're going to make her lips the RO2. They're going to just be a little bit rosier. And I'm going to bring just a little bit of color in there where her cheeks are. And I'm coming back in with my double zero and kind of feathering up some of that just to put. She's just got a little bit of, of cheek color there. And then finally just kind of pulling again some of that out. Okay, so there's her little... Okay, now we're going to do her arms. So she's got a couple of arms there in her belly. So I'm probably I'm going to do like her arms and her neck at the same time. Okay, so this one's kind of back in here. If I'm looking at her, if the light's, you know, even like coming in off the right side at all, um, you know, her belly does stick out where, again, I still think that like her belly's going to be shaded underneath her arm. So, um, again, looking at this, if she was underwater, how much of a shadow she would get. So, I'm just kind of coming underneath here, her arm, thinking that this will be a little bit lighter. Kind of doing her fingers. Again, there's going to be some shadow underneath a lot of this her little fingers up in here and the top part of her arm there would be shadowed and most of underneath her chin here okay be a little bit of color there I'm not going to worry tremendously I'm going back with my double zero here about the little um, her little beaded pearl uh, straps on her top because I can go back in with a, like a white Signo or a white uh, pigment marker and actually kind of work on those a little bit later and make them the circles. So I'm laying in the second color just underneath here to add this shadow. Maybe a little bit in the crease of her arm there. These little fingertips that are going back around will be a little darker. We're taking then the E11 and we're just going to put a little bit, you know, there's going to be a shadow or a little, you know, down in here, a little bit, underneath her chin, where her little chin is, and she's kind of a chubby kind of little mermaid it looks like, a little bit underneath here, not a whole lot. Now we're going to go back down and use our, our double zero and kind of pull this in a little bit further. Kind of working in some circles to kind of blend this up. And again, sometimes I'm not, I'm okay with some of those little harsher lines on the shadows, but if these are the wrong colors or you just don't like these particular colors, they're harsh for you. And you know, she's got a little more color. Then choose colors that you use. I think everybody should have their favorite um, skin tones that they like using. Uh, again, there are different skin tones, whether you're using a um, Caucasian skin tone, an Asian, and an African American. Uh, so it just kind of depends on what type of a skin tone you're trying to acquire, but I think you should have a basic skin tone that you that you like. I'd like to have a little bit more color right there. And again, if this line gets harsh, you can just kind of pull that in that way. Okay, I'm going to add just for a little bit, we're going to take our little nails and we're going to put use that R0 two that we had up there. I'm going to put little dots just on those little fingernails right there. Okay. So now we're going to do our belly. And I'm going to do our belly 
that, you know, this is shadowed in this part being the round, though, it's actually kind of catching some light at that point. So that's what I'm going to, to kind of pop in there. Okay, so I'm kind of coming in off underneath her hand and just kind of coming up this way. And you see this little area here? I forgot that. That should be skin tone. That's between her little top. Okay, so I can quickly kind of grab that and just add some color. Okay, so now we're going to come back underneath here and like that. Okay, add a little bit of color just to shade again underneath her arm. Okay, going back to the double zero, pulling this out just a little bit and blending that in and up. And then I'm going back with my triple zero and making her belly just kind of blending it all together. Okay, now we're going to also, I'm going to take the 11, E11, and I'm just going to put a little bit of a dot where a belly button would be there, just for an accent. So, there we have our skin, and I'm going to put a little bit of E11, I think, back down in here, and kind of blend that, because that's going to be a little bit darker, and maybe a little bit right there just to add a little definition of where her top was. Okay, so there we have the skin tone. And that part's relatively finished on there. So now what I typically do is I will go back and I will do the hair because I think that's the next light thing. So we'll kind of do the hair and we'll do the shell because that, that gets into those light tones. Okay, so when I do her, her hair is very wispy and as I throw my hands around there. So her hair is wispy and we are going to use our yellow tones that I, I spoke about here. We're gonna use the, um, the YR31 and then the YR21 and that fluorescent FY1 and then the Y23. Okay, so the Y31 is one of the lighter colors. So again, I'm going to start here at her roots, and I'm just kind of following. And if you look at this, there's a fair amount of, um, you know, it's just kind of whimsical there. There's a strand back out here. We do have a little strand back down in here. So I'm just pulling out these whimsical tones. There's a little bit up in here by these these little barrettes. So I'm just kind of getting those covered. Kind of following some of these lines. And again, I am not taking all this color quite out to the edges, you know, at this time. So I'm just kind of laying in that color to begin with there. Okay? So now I'm going with my white R, okay, that was the YR31, now I'm doing the YR21, and that's adding a little more of a golden tone, okay, so I think that, you know, her roots would have a little bit more of that golden tone, and we could get some of these areas that are a little bit more um, shaded, like this one back down in here, and, you know, this hair that's going to be back down kind of underneath there, we're kind of adding some of that, and just kind of following some of these swirly lines up into this hair. And again, if her hair is underwater, okay. It's a little area here, I want to put a little more right in there, okay. Okay, now I'm going to add the 
FY11, I mean, FY, FY1, excuse me, which is the fluorescent. And this is going to get, get kind of bright, but then we're going to also go back and, and cover some of this up. So I'm kind of adding some highlights. It's adding in some depth of color, as you can see, a little more golden tones. And it's going to get a little bit brighter. But it's definitely adding some highlights highlights and I don't necessarily mind I think some of that's kind of a fun thing and I'm kind of capturing the top edges of her hair again this is a that's a mermaid it's kind of a fun thing okay so I'm just kind of laying in some of this fluorescent color just to add some of those fun highlights it, it's a fun, it's whimsical. That's what I like about this. So then I have the Y23 that I'm going to come back in here again. And Y23 is going to tone some of this down, maybe adding in some of these low lights a little bit down in here. And I'm kind of working both a couple of those areas because I want to get them covered and I I this hair has got some streaks to it that's what I like about it it does have those streaks and I am going to come back and I start with my YR31 the last the first marker that I did and just also come back in here and add a little more just some different colors but that's what I like about this it's kind of fun that it has some of those streaks in her hair. I'm not even sure that I'm not going to have you putting in a few more highlights of the fluorescent. Okay, so I do like the fact that we have some fun little peeking highlights of the fluorescent out of there. So I've done her hair. Just kind of a whimsical, real fun following. It doesn't have to have a whole lot. You could get in and really do a lot with it, but I think it's just fun, whimsical, and flows with the water that's out there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start, and I am going to do a variation. It's just it's going to start in the YG010307 series, and I'm tapering it on into the BG then her fin will be the, um, the purple. So that's what I'm going to start in with. And I'm going to do that first. So in order for me to do that, I'm turning my image, you know, upside down. And I'm going to use those three YG colors. And I'm going to start with my YG01. And I'm going to start right here. And... Just catching that edge, but I'm coming down and I'm going to be about to halfway. That's where I'm going with this. I don't have to take all of my color that far, but that's where I'm looking at my green and my blue will mix together. So I'm, I'm just kind of laying in a color with a flicking motion there. Okay. So then the next mar the marker is going to be the YG03, and we are putting a little bit of depth here because it's going to be down towards, you know, the belly part right here and a little bit there. I want a little bit of color in there. And then I have the YG05. Just a little bit more to emphasize that color. I'm kind of working my way back. Yeah, and there's not a lot of those other two colors. Just barely kind of pulling that color in there. Just a little bit further. And then again, just putting in my other one. And some of this just takes some working with this. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also work my way 
back up her tail because I want kind of my light colors to come together. So I'm starting with my BG000 and my BG000, I just loaded it and it just dropped some ink. So that's what happens. I'll cut the image out, but I just re-inked my pen, so I'm going to work with getting some of that ink out. So I've gotten it a little fuller than I thought I did. So I'm going to lay in this color here, and it's actually going to come pretty far up. Okay, but I'm still going to leave a little bit of white area where these guys are going to join together. Okay, then I have my BG02, and I'm starting up with that just a little bit. And again, this part of this tail is going to be relatively dark because of it being flipped back around. Okay, and then we're going to start coming up the top there. Then I have my 05, and that's the darkest color, and we're going to bring that into here, and it's again going to be relatively dark there until we come up here. My phone is ringing. I'm having a lot of problems tonight with all the phones ringing. It will stop in a second, so we're just going to let that phone ring. I'm going back to the BG02, pulling that up a little bit. And then we're going back with the 01, and we are just kind of blending these together. So we're coming back up to there. Now, I'm going back with my YG01, and I'm blending that down in there. So what I'm basically just doing is I'm making these two colors blend together. That's what I want them to do. I want them just to kind of mesh together there. That's what's so great about um, the Copic markers is that you don't get the contamination or anything like that. So I wanted those two to blend together, and that's what I've done. I've blended those guys together, um, thinking that maybe I would want just a little more color or a little more depth down here along this side. Okay. So that's what I can go back and kind of add that because that's the bottom side. It's going to have a little bit of shading in there. Okay. So there we have that. Now we'll, we'll use these markers again, but I'm going to go back and finish up. I'm going to do her tail. I will use these markers to do her little shell top and probably add some accents on the, um, on the um, fin. So we're going to do the fin, and that's going to be in our purple colors, which are our V01, 12, 15, and 17. So we're going to lay a little bit of color in, and again, um, it depends if we're trying to get a little bit of depth out of this fin. I'm going to start down here. I'm probably going to do two sides different because I want to keep the wet edge and kind of just bring it up here. should be a little darker where it's touching the tail there. Okay, then we're going to jump to the 12. And add a little bit of 12. And we're going to do the 15. I hope you can see what I'm doing there. I may have not... And then some 17. And again, just getting a little bit of color. Coming back up, blending that, pulling that just a little further. Okay, this is the 12. Again, pulling this up. And then the O1. And we're going to take the O1 and bring it all the way from the top and bring it all the way down. 
I'm just kind of blending that. Now I had mentioned, and I forgot to kind of show it, I do apologize on some of my other videos, that I have this paper towel here, and you can see I have quite a bit of saturation on there. And um, I have found that sometimes it helps uh, absorb some of that when you're working with those darker colors in the reds and, and these purples and these pigments. So that's what that's for there. I am using Copic Express It paper. So if you are familiar, that's pretty much what I, I use a lot. So now I'm going to start and do the exact same thing on this side by laying down the V01, a little bit of that V12, the V15, and we'll get some of these shadows, and then we have our V17. I'm trying to make that little tail I'll work on getting this tail a little bit there. Okay. And it goes all the way up to here. Catching those edges. And just coming back down in here and blending a little bit. Okay. I have a little bit of a line there, so I'm going to come back in and just kind of blend. Again, if you have problems with some of these colors, again, palette blending is a good way, or tip-to-tip -tip blending if you just want to add a little bit of color. But there's some depth there on her tail. So I am happy with that. Uh, while I have my purple markers out, I am making her little starfish. I'm making those purple. So I am going to go in here and I am going to just totally, with my V01, totally color those purple for now, okay? Then I have my 12, and I'm going to shadow this one down here a little bit darker. I have 15 right here in my hand. And I'm not going to use any 17, because I really don't think it's going to be necessary. I'm just kind of blending a little bit of that. Okay. So there we have that. She's got her, her purples done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going back, and I am going to um, color the little... Um, the little shell top that she has on. I think we'll do that, and we're going to do that with some green and the blue again. And then we'll do her fin at the same time, since I'm going to do that. So I am going to start with my BG triple zero, and I want to, what I want to do is I want to make this part here, um, I want to make this the blue, which is closest, and then I just want to do the very top part in the Yellow. So what I'm doing is I am laying in the first BG triple zero, and these are such small things. And again, I want to kind of do the same blend that I did on the on the tail. So I'm going to come back in here, and I'm just going to add that color. That was my O1. I am going to give it just a little bit of just a little line of O3, YG03, and kind of blend those. I am going to use the next one I have was my BG02, and I'm going to do a little bit of the same thing that I did there with that just that little line, and then I'm going to blend those together. Actually, the O2, I can get a little bit more color right there. Okay. And I'm going to use my YG01 and pretty much just go over them again just to add that color in there. 
I don't want them a lot of blue, but I'm just I'm adding a little bit of that blue tone in there. Might have gone a little farther than I wanted to on that. But there we are, we're kind of making them blue. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on her tail. And I am going to just kind of turn this image a little bit. And I am going to actually use my BGO too because I think it's going to be a little darker. So I get some color and all I'm doing is laying in a little bit of color here. And I'm going to use the, the YGO3. Just kind of drawing that line there. Okay. I have my B triple zero. Just kind of doing a little blending there. And then this is my YG01. Just Kind of taking the lightest color and using it as a blend to just kind of make that line because I just I wanted that a two tone line at that point. Okay. So moving right along here, we have the last little thing to do will be her shell little um, shell phone is what they call it. I actually believe that's what this image is called. I'm sorry, I don't have that down, but I think it's um, it's her shell phone. And we're going to use a E50. I am just going to color this shell in the E50. I'm going back to my E11. And I'm just adding, just on these accent lines, you can see there's some spots kind of where the shell was. And if you're familiar with the shells, they've just got some odd colors like this. And adding a little bit of the RO2 just to put a little bit more of a pink tone in it. Going back to my E50 and just softening those out and blending those. Okay. Now as I said, what I'm going to do is I am taking this is, this happens to be a Pentel marker, but I'm t uh, you can use your white Signo markers and these are her little um, pearls. I'm taking this and just putting a little bit of white. Maybe it's difficult to see, but I'm just making those her her little pearls. I also have a Spica. This is a clear Spica marker and I'm wanting to add some glitter to her. I want her to be kind of a fun fun fairy, you know, fun little um, mermaid. So I'm just kind of I'm going around some of her fish scales with this pen very quickly, but this is a Spica. You could use probably any glitter pen I just know that these Spica ones work very well, and I'm just doing some of her fish scales. And that way she gets a iridescence to her. This one just happens to be a clear Spica. Um, you could use the green one if you had the green one. As I also said, stickles are fun things to use. You could go and put um, a lot of stickles on her. I'm just kind of catching some of these up in here with some arbitrary, just some, some lines here. Just kind of laying it on. Because by the time I get done, it's going to look like she's got a fair amount. But I've just kind of run the little half circle fish scale look around there. Okay, and I'm actually going to do all these little spots around her belly where it would be the jewels there. Okay. I'm also going to just lay in some lines. You could do dots or lines, but I'm just laying in a little bit up here on the top of her tail. 
And I'm going to follow these little lines in her top, her little shell top here. That's my dog moving around. You're going to hear this. Lots of background noise on this video today, isn't there? So, there we have it. I could put a little bit on the, on the star here. And I think she's done. There we have a little shell phone mermaid from Mo Manning Digital. Thanks for stopping by.